Hey guys, so today I want to talk a little bit about the current denial of service attacks that are being waged on the Tor network and now I2P network. Now, I kind of wonder, could it be the same actors that are doing this? And what it comes down to is this is truly a war on your right to privacy, your right to anonymity. And I think we need to fight back at this. And I wanted to talk a little bit about how we can do that. And one of the biggest things we can do to fight against these kinds of attacks, this war on our anonymity online, our human rights, and even our human autonomy itself. Because when it comes down to it, you know, the mass surveillance industry today is an attack on our human autonomy because it creates behavior changes. Everything is being collected and sold off. Once users are identified, which is another reason I'm really concerned about the push for age verification right now. There's a real push for age verification for websites. And this is being done in a coordinated fashion worldwide. And a lot of this comes under the umbrella of some of the World Economic Forum's plans for the digitalization of governments and countries. The attacks on the Tor and I2P networks, they're completely different types of attacks because they're entirely different networks. Tor uses onion routing, and I2P also uses something similar called garlic routing, but the difference here being that I2P network, or the Invisible Internet Project, actually is a peer-to-peer -peer network. So each person who runs I2P router becomes a part of the nodes of the network. And that means that each user ends up helping to transfer encrypted data for every site being visited. On the Tor network, on the other hand, we have voluntary nodes. People who actually want to be part of the network have to actually set up a entry guard or snowflake, for instance. And that's something I've worked on automating. So if you want to help strengthen the Tor network, go to my Snowflake Tor service repository and download this. And all you have to do if you run any Linux device, whether it's a laptop, desktop, server, or even a Pine Phone or Librem 5, you can download this repository and run the install.sh. Simply running that one command helps strengthen the Tor network and helps it avoid some of the potential for de-anonymization in the future. The fact of the matter is the more nodes we have, the stronger the network becomes. This also goes for I2P. The more nodes we have on the I2P network, the stronger the network becomes. And I'll probably create something to automate becoming a dedicated I2P router because the only way this is going to be solved is to create a larger network and a larger user base. Even when it comes down to the service, the strength of the network, the anonymity is dependent on the number of nodes as well and also the number of users. So check out some of the stuff I've made recently. That is something you can set up on any Linux device. I show it in the screenshot or the photo here on the Pine Phone, but you don't need a Pine Phone to use this. You can use it. In fact, I'm using it right now on my desktop. Once you tap on the desktop shortcut or the Pine Phone or Librem 5 button, it'll automatically start the I2P router in the background. And once you close the browser, it stops it for you. But what we really need to deal with these denial of service attacks is to create more permanent or more dedicated I2P routers. Share the scripts, grow the network, lower any potential barriers to becoming a part of the Tor network as a snowflake. You don't need to worry about being listed in the public Tor node directory. Help users around the world dealing with internet censorship connect into the Tor network. And for the I2P desktop browser setup, I've created a custom I2P profile that automates the proxying and everything for you. All you have to do is move the files to the right location. I actually have a full tutorial on doing that here. So check out the public blog. It's public to everyone. Despite the domain name, you don't ever have to buy me a coffee. But if you want to, you're always 
always welcome to. And of course, I appreciate that kind of thing. But most of all, what I appreciate is people who reshare these videos and tutorials. It also strengthens our anonymity by adding more users and nodes to the network. But if you have an opportunity to do so, run the I2P router as a dedicated I2P router. The I2P network is much smaller than Tor. And so, I've, as I've always mentioned, my recommendation is to use Tor browser for most activities. But there's still a lot of interesting things you can find on the I2P network. And you can even use it as an out proxy to diversify some of your anonymity techniques online. I2P is under a major threat right now from this. You know, the best thing we can do, and even as ZZZ mentions, is to actually help spread the word and grow the I2P network. This will increase the security. It'll also help the network deal with these denial of service attacks. And what it does is it directly weakens these malicious, unethical nodes. Whoever's doing these attacks is completely unethical. They're against human rights. It's pretty clear from the attacks. Whoever they are has a interest in destroying the right to privacy online. You know, I think that much is pretty clear. You know, the fact that there are attacks on both Tor and I2P at the same time, it's time to take action. So I really want to encourage you to share this video everywhere, get the word out, help grow the network, help grow the user base. And if you have an opportunity to do so, take an old device and run an I2P router 24 hours a day. That's going to help strengthen the network, help prevent these kind of denial of service attacks. They're even modifying the behavior of the I2P routers they're running in order to disrupt the network. Now, they've mentioned they have no evidence that the attacker could be trying to de-anonymize any particular user or hidden service, but like I mentioned, the only solution here is to help strengthen the I2P network. The best thing you can do is spread the word about Tor and I2P. Tell people why they should use it. Let them know that the IMF or the International Monetary Fund wants to make your internet history connected directly to your credit score. And let them know that their insurance companies are using their private searches in order to raise their rates for health insurance, car insurance, and other things, all publicly available information. Help grow the network of users and help grow the network of nodes by sharing these kinds of scripts and ideas like the automated Snowflake installer and also things like the current I2P desktop setup, which is fully automated once you set it up. You simply click it, it starts I2P router, opens up the browser to the custom I2P profile, so it does everything for you. When you close the browser, it also stops the I2P router for you. It's a great way to get people started with I2P. We need to do something about it. We need to get active, and that's part of what I'm doing with these automated setups to help strengthen the network and also spread information, show people how I2P and Tor hidden services can add security to their networks, their remote administration, adding end-to-end -end encryption overlay over whatever service you're interested in setting up. It's easier sometimes than even setting up the HTTPS certificates, and you don't need HTTPS certificates when you have a hidden service. Share this with others, and if you want to support this, go to buymeacoffee.com slash politictech, and most of all, share the links, share the tutorials, and help spread this information so we can all have a more free internet. That's what I have today, guys. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll be back later with more on how to protect your privacy.